Well, it's the biggest holiday or the biggest event, the biggest festival, I guess, holiday in Japan. It's New Year. And how does Japan, Japanese prepare for New Year? They sweep. They clean. They sweep the garden. This is a shrine, Shinto shrine. It's quite old. It's my local shrine. Sua Jinja, Sua Sua Shrine. Before Edo, I just sit here on this hill. It used to overlook swamps and rice fields. Now it overlooks the love hotels and business hotels down in Nipori. You go to the shrine, the first thing you do is wash your hands, cleanse your soul. The old folks even rinse their mouth out. There's a technique for that, and it's probably already on YouTube, a hundred places. Why is there a metal basket on that water? Keep the pigeons out. Dragon on the pump water. Up the steps to the shrine. Local God resides. I believe there are basically three different symbols for the Shinto deities. Kami, one is the mirror. It's one of the most common. In the back, you can probably see it reflected there. You get into the heart of the Shinto shrine, and what do you see? You see yourself reflected in the mirror. The Shinto shrine is empty, it's open. You can't lock it, it's just ground, public ground. It's open all night. This area is not predominantly a Shinto area, although every district in Tokyo has its shrine and its own shrine. Over here is where the old performances go on. It'll be open for New Year. There will not be any performances. There will be a full-size doll, probably an archer here. We'll all be ready for New Year, which is just a few days away. This is little Jizo, Buddhist God. You notice they are right next door to each other. For a long time in Japanese history, they were not divided. Shinto and Buddhist, just all mixed together. Nobody cared. But when they restored or revolted and brought the emperor back, the emperor's religion is the Shinto religion. And they sort of regenerated it and separated it from the Buddhist images. This is one of my favorite Buddhist images. Ashira. One of the six planes of existence. Below humans, below animals. This is Ashira. A warrior creature with six. That one's got eight arms. Couple of guardians. Buddhist temple gate. You don't want to mess with these guys. They're packing. They are all armed. They do protect the place. This bell is the center point for New Year. On New Year's Eve. It's a tradition in Japan, I guess in the Buddhist world, I don't know, but certainly in the Japanese Buddhist world, to ring these bells. See, this is a graveyard, but it's also more akin to a public park. In the springtime, we have wonderful uh, cherry blossom viewings, Hanami's here, drunken raucous events. In spite of the uh, reverence we hold, don't kill this baby. Okay. Most famous grave for me is down here, Takashi Oden. This gentleman is reading about her. Takashi Oden was the last woman, last woman decapitated in Edo by the government. Stone cutters we got here, also flower shops. It's the main business. This is a funeral business. So the shop, and next is the old whatever you want store. 
brooms, bug spray and toilet paper, tobacco too. Across the street from the kindergarten, temple kindergarten. I guess most of the kindergartens were temple kindergartens back when. Now we got some privates and some publics. Temple here. We're on a short ride to my studio now. This temple very good for births. Come and pray here for a safe and easy birth. New Year decoration, nice one. New Year just a few days away. They're putting up their bamboos. These greens you see next to people's doors when they finish work for the stone cutter. People finish work for the day, for the year, they put up their New Year decoration. That's traditional. Temple across from me, what have they done? Oh, they've got theirs up. Let's walk in there. They've got, a, it's not a giant, but just such a beautiful seasonal garden here. New Year decoration. Great old sign. And you'll notice the uh, graffiti all around. These are people's names printed on paper and then secretly stuck to the temple gate. I guess you're supposed to stick a thousand of them on a thousand gates and get a wish or cleanse your soul. This temple is distinctive for many reasons. One, that it's across from my studio. Another is it has a great stone emma. Emma is the fifth judge of hell. He's the guardian of hell, the boss. He decides whether your soul goes up or goes down. I think in the seventh anniversary of your death, which makes it an important time to pray. This was carved in the Edo era. He's got his two helpers, one whose face is gone. I expect he was a horse. I expect the other guy was a sheep. Emma has history throughout Asia. This is a smaller temple. It's quite old. And it's the temple where I ring the bell. So let's go in and see what it's looking like now. Yeah. We got our cats. Temple cats. Up there there'll be a ceremony. They'll be chanting in the new year. Oh, washing Jizo here too. Who knew? You know it's so exciting in those days, you don't really know. And all these stones. I could be dark and say these are stones of people who didn't pay their rent, but it isn't really that way. These are stones of people who have passed on. Buddhists do believe in reincarnation. And I think the time is 80 years. Look at these stinky cats. I'm not going to feed you, buddy, and I'm not going to kick you. So there. This is the temple we'll be reading. We'll be, uh, temple bell will be striking 108 times come New Year's. Yeah, Buddhism, uh, I guess. 80 years you move on, your soul transmigrates, is that what it does? So there's no point in keeping a stone around. Pray to an empty grave, they'd be reincarnated. Up or down, drag down to hell, or step up one, who knows. Now there's a fancy new year. Whole thing. The paper and the citrus and the holy rope and the fern, some seaweed hanging down. And the seaweed in the middle hanging down. This is a fancy place. It's a red gate. 